quite literally. Raphael. I'm just soaking in the views, Jen. <clears throat> this island's so gorgeous. Can't miss them all. It's our last day here on the island and we're doing the most right now. So we're headed to Fajaria, which is a hot spring. Another one. Another one. There's four main big ones. We were at one yesterday. This one is completely free and it's basically in the ocean. So we're headed there right now. It's all the way on the east side, but later in the day we're gonna be making our way more over into the middle of the island. Now you wanna go there during low tide. Trust me, you do not wanna get caught up there in high tide. It'll, uh, you'll get swept away on the rocks. You'll know when you're here because you have to go down a huge hill and then you pass a house, down a walkway, past a crater. That's true, there is a crater here, which is kind of cool. And all the rocks around here are volcanic. The best time to get here is during low tide, otherwise you might get swept away. There's a lot of people here right now. It's about 11 a.m., which is exactly low tide. So we're gonna see how crowded it is. Hopefully the water is actually warm. We actually came here on our very first day, but we never got in because it was high tide. So we went to the water, dipped our hands in, it was too cold. We didn't get there it. There were also some pretty crazy waves coming in and then the drag of them back out to sea is not something that I'd want to float around in. Yeah, it could turn you into human tartar real quick. Common theme on the island and one thing we noticed when we got here is because the water's so low, you can actually see the steam rising from the earth. I think it's gonna be pretty warm. So here's the deal, when you come here, come early. You'll beat the crowds, you'll have uh, low tide, which is, it gets really, really, really hot. So yeah. be prepared for that. The further you are to the mainland in the back of the pool, it is almost unbearably hot. It's scorching hot to the point where you feel like maybe your insides are cooking, you're not really sure. And then the closer you get to the ocean, it's a pretty pleasant feel, I'd say. Also make sure to hold on to the ropes. You'll need them when the waves start coming in and you can wear your uh, flip-flops all the way up to the ladder that gets in the pool. If you want to bring water shoes as well, I'd recommend it, but I don't want to weigh your bag down when you're traveling. Flip-flops will do fine. Overall, definitely recommend coming here. It's free, it's fun, and so far it's my favorite hot spring on the island. Yeah. 50 cents per person to go in to see the furnace. Part of that 50 cent entrance fee covers a walk through the mystical forest, which is around us right now. Jen said she feels like she's Harry Potter. I never said that, one. It does remind me of a scene though. I've never even seen that movie. So one thing that we've noticed on this island is whenever we're driving down the roads, we see these things that look like forest fires almost in the distance but they're not. You think the whole island's on fire, but what it is is steam coming up out of the ground because I think this whole area sits on like a hotbed of volcanic activity. The entire island is basically a volcano. 
There's still some active areas, but most of them are no longer active, I believe. This whole island's smoking like Wiz Khalifa. So one dish that we're gonna try tonight, it's unique to the island, is called, what is it called? Cositas das Fernas. Cositas das Fernas, I guess. And so what that means is they literally take a pot and drop it into the earth so it cooks with the steam from the volcanic activity coming up. You can see some of the holes where it's almost like they actually created some sort of cement enclosure and they put these pots down inside. I don't know if they do it overnight or what, but they pull them up around 11.30 or 12.30 in the afternoon and then they have all these stews for all these different restaurants. So it turns out that Cusido is so popular here, you have to make a reservation for restaurants. You might be able to get away with not making a reservation for restaurants, but we're told you have to make a reservation for restaurants in order to get a spot. It does make sense though, because it looks like there's limited holes essentially back here where the stew is cooked. So they probably have a limited number of people they can serve per night. What's really cool about tonight, that little pot back there, we think is gonna be our dinner. Yeah, I think that's what we're eating right there because that's the name of the restaurant that we're going to and we're going there in about an hour and a half. That's dinner. <laughs> Seven minutes away from the boiling springs are the hot mineral springs. I don't know if they're mineral springs, but there's some thermal pools that we're going to. Thermal pool, correct. They're called Posa da Beja, and they have several different pools that you can actually swim in. I think there's only one. I think there's several. Look, there's one right there, there's one right over there. Ah, true. We're, yeah, so we're, we're in. Here's a, here's a quick travel tip. They say that the water here is super rich in iron, so it can stain your bathing suit. So bring a throwaway bathing suit when you come here, or one that you don't really care about. has a lot to offer with the five different pools. Out of these five, it seemed like three of them were all the same temperature, and then two of them were a different one, a little bit cooler. Three at 39 degrees Celsius, and two at 28 degrees Celsius. All of them hold a decent amount of people. They each aesthetically look a little bit different from one another, so that was cool too. Yeah, you do, though, really need to be careful about the iron in the water. I mean, I feel like I smell like aluminum or like braces or orthodontal gear right now. <laughs> okay. Looks like you don't need a reservation, but... Maybe in high season, but right now there's a ton of tables open. So you may be wondering, what exactly is an cuisine? A lot of different things. There's an assortment of different types of meats, everything from blood sausage to traditional sausage, brisket, chicken, pig's ear, um, and then it also has baked potatoes, kale, carrots, and basically half a head of cabbage. It's funny because when they first put on the table, you can almost smell the sulfur, but when you eat it, you don't taste it. At least not the meat. It tastes like almost like an Irish cabbage stew. Slow cook, meat's tender, falling apart. And I think if there is a hint of sulfur, it's very, very light. So, season really well. This blood sausage, or dark black sausage, this is really holding the smoky flavor. I don't know if it's because of the fat content in it or what, but super smoky and very delicious. All right, we've given you our entire day. 
all in all, the stew, the sulfur stew, as we like to call it, is actually really good. It was banging. If you know of any good places on the island, drop it in the comments so other people will know where to go. But if you do come to San Miguel, definitely get the Cozitas stew. It is worth it. And check out Tony's. Good place, amazing prices. We're out. What's in the stew? We don't know exactly. Beef. But we'll tell you tonight. And potatoes. We'll try it and see. I think. And probably eggs. Because it smells like eggs.